capital of China, takes Japanese air raids as usual. Under the guidance of Madame Chiang Kai-shek and her sisters, the Chinese are continually rebuilding the city. Modern structures of brick and masonry replace the old. Here is proof that a city is as strong as its people. Old China, serene, grim, determined, fights on. Chiang Kai-shek at the helm. In Washington, the chief of the Army Air Corps decorates a hero of the war in the South Pacific. Colonel Sweeney, a fighting pilot of Marines, wins the Distinguished Service Cross for unusual heroism under fire. The colonel flew with those famous flying fortresses in the United States victory at Midway. Now, with a medal for valor, he's going back for another crack at the enemy. At New York Airport, another hero comes home. Lieutenant Moore, first Marine back from the Solomon Islands, is welcomed by his wife. A proud family congratulates the lieutenant who survived wounds received fighting in the Pacific. Today, homecoming is the event of their lives. For there's an addition to the family he's never seen. A boy, two and a half weeks old, and just like his father. Lieutenant Moore, decorated for heroism, dive bombing a Jap carrier in the Solomon Islands, blasting the enemy at Midway, was a mild thrill compared with his homecoming. The largest oil tanker is ready for launching. The christening takes place at one of the great Henry Kaiser shipyards, and down the way she goes. A 22,000 ton giant, more than 500 feet long. Joining the huge fleet of United Nations supply ships, she'll sail the seven seas. Arlington National Cemetery, Turkish journalists, headed by the well-known Hussein Yalshin, deputy to the Grand National Assembly, mark the 19th anniversary of the Turkish Republic with a simple tribute to America's war dead. Of remembrance finds American soldiers again fighting to preserve the democratic way of life, that free men may live in peace. San Francisco's Chinatown celebrates the capture of a two-man Japanese submarine, returned here as a trophy of war. Chinese priests drive out lingering devils with their ancient dragon dance. Firecrackers complete the job as American Chinese end a day of real celebration. Clark Gable, cinema idol of millions, bronzed and tough, is now an officer in the United States Army Air Corps. This is the graduating parade of his classmates. Enlisting as a private, working up from the ranks, Gable won his commission by hard work, and with it, the admiration of the entire nation. Congratulations from the general in command. Today, as Lieutenant Gable, he plays his greatest role of all time an officer in the Air Force of his country. The first Brazilian troop convoy of the war puts to sea under sealed orders.
constant vigilance is maintained. Lookouts search the horizon for lurking enemy submarines. Brazilian and United States warships patrol the route. At an unnamed Brazilian port, they prepare to disembark. Every ship and every soldier accounted for. Men to reinforce garrison standing guard along Brazil's 5,000 miles of coastline. Men prepared and ready to resist any attack. Brazil, staunch ally of the United Nations, is on the alert in South America. Five little suitcases of Canada's famous five little girls are going to the big city to help the Dominion's victory loan drive. Yes, the Dion quintuplets are off to Toronto. Even though they're celebrities, dining in a railway car is a rare and thrilling experience. Eight and a half years old, they've left home only once before, and then to meet the king and queen. En route, with Annette at the organ, they rehearse songs they'll sing when they make their first appearance on the stage. They leave the train early to avoid crowds waiting at the station. Then, meeting Ontario's new premier, little Emily promptly sells her first bond. Five little daughters of Canada, all doing their bit to help win the war. Douglas MacArthur, United Nations commander in the Southwest Pacific, arrives by bomber to inspect positions in New Guinea. With Australian General Sir Thomas Blamey, chief of Allied Land Forces, he goes by scout car to the front. The roads are winding jungle trail through native Papuan villages. Stopping for lunch in the field kitchen of an Australian outpost, the general gets a first-hand picture of the wild terrain over which his men are fighting. For exceptional service, he honors a wounded Associated Press newsman who was given up for lost. Then deeper into the jungle, speeding over roads literally hacked out of the wilderness, on toward advanced positions in the Owen Stanley Mountains, past native carriers who volunteer to bring fighting supplies to his men. This is MacArthur at the front, hero of Bataan, now sworn to roll back the Japs. 